So about episode 106. Dun, dun, dun. Cute scary music. Uh, although that's not really scary, you know what I mean. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you are new, please consider leaving a like and subscribing for more awesome content. That being said, we're going to talk about episode 106 of Dragon Ball Zeto or Dragon Ball Super because uh, it's not Z. Anyways, now that that's out the way, <laughs> I'm in a really good mood now because this episode is pretty funny for like one instance. But long story short, the episode begins with Dr. Rota and it ends with Dr. Rota, by the way. We have no idea what the guy's special ability is. Like, and I think he was actually in some of the spoilers and he was just like totally a no show. Like uh, he did nothing the entire episode. The episode begins with him uh, basically getting one shot and then he gets eliminated at the end in his next appearance. So he's completely irrelevant. But Hermila and the the, the freaking reflector guy, they said his name like one time, I think. And I didn't even remember it. So forgive me. I still feel like that warrants a like. But anyways, <laughs> um, so basically, long story short, the context of this episode is Gohan and Piccolo are basically up against the air quotes up sniper because the sniper guy is in a remote area basically tracking Gohan and Piccolo's movements through these orbs. No, not truth-seeking orbs, but these orbs that um, are basically levitating, and they're able to pick up on heat signatures. So that being said, he can basically always detect where they're at despite them masking their key or anything like that, for example. So what they wind up doing, which is actually pretty damn smart, after they take a few hits, Piccolo loses an arm a couple of times, or both of his arms one time, which, by the way, Gohan points it out, but every time that happens and Piccolo has to regenerate, his stamina depletes. So will that be a factor coming up? I guess we'll just have to see, right? Anyways, they basically start warming up the rocks in the area, the you know, the debris, the rubble, because it basically kind of, from, from the perspective of the orbs, it basically hides where they're at. So that's like hella smart for them to do, right? But what he decides to do is just basically eliminate everything. So by the way, and it was interesting too, up to this point in the episode, they kind of made it seem like there was only one antagonist there. Um, towards the end of it, when Tien and Goku and Vegeta get involved, we come to realize that Hermila was the actual sniper from the background, basically firing a, a compressed energy blast at the reflector guy that they said his name. I just, I can't even right now. But the guy that was mainly the one there for most of the episode. And afterwards, he was sending it off towards the orbs, which the orbs were basically bouncing it to their target. So it was really complex stuff. And it makes me wonder, like, if they always have had to fight in tandem from their universe, which they're a pretty deadly combo anyway, but it's pretty interesting. And then towards the end of the episode, whenever the reflector guy is about to get eliminated, uh, Vegeta basically asks him, and I was wondering that too, it was like, do you not have your own offense? No? It kind of like, that's basically what happened. He didn't have any real offensive capabilities to himself, so he had no way to defend himself. N Excuse me, I burped a little bit. Now, it was really cool to see the way that Tien was portrayed in this. We got to see the return of the multi-form technique, and I'm happy that Krillin explained, for the people that haven't watched Dragon Ball, for example, that that form basically weakens him. It basically divides his power between the clones, which is why he doesn't really use that. It's basically a shadow clone. It literally is. It's literally the same concept um, because it divides chakra, you know, shadow clone, so on and so forth. That's my second Naruto reference in this, by the way. <laughs> Anyways, so yeah, it's basically something like that. Divides his power and stuff of that nature. Uh, it also said that it I mean, basically divided his speed, which is interesting. I don't know if that's always been the case. I'd have to go back and look at the exact dialogue of Dragon Ball when that move was first used. But it kind of explains why it took him so long to catch up to the other guy. Not to mention that Hermila wasn't, you know, he was also kind of like moving on his own. They made it a point to say like three or four times that he does not fire a blast without moving. And then towards the end, Tien pulls the classic Goku, lets his guard down. Basically, when he has Hermila cornered, he basically, I said basically like freaking 20 times in this freaking video. Don't you love that I'm aware of that? He literally, or right, we're going to substitute basically with literally. <laughs> he literally fires a key blast at the ground, destroying that portion of the arena in which Tien is falling as well in the debris. He's about to be eliminated. Out of nowhere come a few clones 
and they bring him with them. So Tien is able to at least get the draw. So after that, Beerus is like, hey, that was commendable. You have my respect for that. And you, that's a cool little thing as well, too, because you've seen in the last couple episodes, I completely forgot to mention it, and I hated myself for it last week. But after that happened with Roshi, Beerus was like, hey, what's that guy's name again? After Krillin corrected, he's like, what's his name again? You know, a sign of Beerus having respect for him. And then he's saying the same thing here. And I think that we've kind of always had a – Beerus persona where he always looked at these characters as being second nature or like you know just fodder right and not to say they aren't but it's something special that he's acknowledging them it's really cool to see that because up to this point he's only really acknowledged Goku and Vegeta he hadn't even really acknowledged Gohan because he never really even saw Gohan do anything right so now we're getting to see him do different things in different contexts and acknowledge these characters which I really loved and back to Gohan on the moment I do enjoy the fact that him and Piccolo are literally just traveling together. And it kind of reminds me of that whole Piccolo is Gohan's real dad type of thing. Not because they're doing anything in particular like fatherly or sonly. You know what I'm saying? But if sonly is even a word. But at the same time, it's just cool seeing them stick together throughout all this. And then you kind of get parallels to when they were younger. Both of them, right? Because when Gohan was a kid, etc., Piccolo is not even that much older than Gohan, by the way. You may think he is, but he's not. Dragon Ball, basically, Piccolo is significantly younger than Goku. Anyways, you know, you get you get parallels to that, and they've always kind of done that. You know, whether it's little things like Gohan wanting to wear Piccolo's clothes, for example. You know, they've always done that, and I really did enjoy that. You kind of feel like Goku should be the one with Gohan, right? But... Goku's too busy doing his own thing. We didn't see any Android 17 or 18 in this episode, which I don't really too much mind it. 17 did have a pretty big spot like a few weeks ago. One thing I will say is we have not seen Frieza for a very long time. We see him at the end of this episode in like a little collage thing. Also, we see Frost in the episode preview. So maybe Frieza's coming back into play next week. I feel like you kind of have to show Frieza a few times if you're going to show Frost and they're both in the arena. You know, you kind of have to. But they did have a whole plot, right, prior to this. So maybe that's part of it. Who knows? Maybe freaking Frieza's going to help Frost eliminate his characters, his teammates, and he's going to, like, migrate to Universe 6 somehow. I don't know if Zeno would even allow that, but it'd be interesting. So that's pretty much it. Once again, we got to see Goku and Vegeta team up. They've been doing that a bit. And that's, like, the second time they launched off a final Kamehameha, except this time they didn't combine them, so they were two standalone attacks, Kamehameha and the fi- and the uh no no that actually that was Gallic on the first time it was Final Flash. Man, I'm tired. Anyways, I'm gonna get up out of here. Anyways, this is the second time we got to see them do joint attacks. So forgive me for all of the mistakes, the mishaps in the video. Let me know in the comments what your favorite part was. Have an awesome day. Thank you guys for the support. I'll catch you guys next week. Oh my god, how could I forget the best part of the episode? So if you're still here, let me know in the comments, by the way. My voice just cracked. The best part of the episode was when Goku and Vegeta showed up and, and um, you know, Tien, or somebody, whoever it was, I think it was Tien, was explaining that they're basically, Goten, Gohan and uh, Piccolo are fighting against a sniper. And he's shooting them from a distance. Vegeta's like, oh, I'm going to go ahead. I'm just going to go ahead and beat them. And he's like, all we need to do is die. And then this freaking a key blast goes flying past his ear. And then immediately, as soon as that happens, go back and watch it. I swear to you, as soon as it happens, these guys hit the ground so fast. They hit the stop, drop, and roll out of the way. Oh, my God. That was awesome. That was the best part of the episode. I, I can't believe I left without talking about that. And I was literally editing, editing the video, and I was like, damn it, I need to put that in there. So... <laughs> Okay. All right, guys. All right. I'll catch you later.